What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my final thoughts for UFC 266. Looking forward to the card. I am here in Vegas going 15 minutes early so I can get out of here and uh, hit the town, you know? I have a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff planned for today, so when I get in, get out, talk some fights with you guys, go over my bets, talk some DK along the way as well. Thank you all so much, as always, for hanging out. If you guys can leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. And if you have not yet, I am doing two contests this week on my full card breakdown prediction video, and then also on my betting breakdown video, doing some contests over there. If you have not yet, go check those out and enter those contests, giving away some free money. Tony, first one in the chat, what's up, Brady? Some good spots this week, some sketchy ones too. Yeah, this is a very sketchy card in terms of, you know, straight betting, parlays. But in terms of, like, the props, I think there's some solid props out there. Uh, Tony got some good value on Valentina. All I had to bet was the title to my car. To <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Bet your car, bet your house. No, don't do that. Uh, we have Uncle Wheezy. What is up, Wheezy? This man is going live from Vegas. Hardest working man in DFS. Big ups, Brady. Shout out to you, Wheezy. Thank you for hanging out. Um, <laughs> Bobby, don't drunk bet Diaz Brady. Don't worry, I won't. Yeah, me and Wheezy will be going live on Sunday, six o'clock, six fifteen p.m. Eastern time, going over the the next week's card, which I need to start looking into. David in the chat, let's go. What's up, David? Hammering hog, Brady on the grind. Yes, sir. Smash that like button. I agree. Victor in the chat, uh, giggity. I agree. Which fight are you looking forward to the most other than the main event? Honestly, like the Euro Smedic Jalen Turner fight, as weird as that sounds, there's so many great fights on the card. Um, but yeah, probably that that fight. I think it's going to be some violence and I think it's going to be fun. Laura Murphy with the upset. I don't know about that, Chase. I don't know. Ola Brady. Ola, how you doing? Um, Laura Murphy with the upset. I see you're going on the Brundage side. Is that highlighted? I got to fix that. No, it's it's a tough fight to call. I looked into Brundage a little bit more, and I do see why the line is coming down. I'm going to change that to Maximov. I do see why the line's coming down. We'll talk about that more when we get there. But I do want to shout out the sponsor, Pub Sports Radio. We just hit 10K subs over there at Pub Sports. Shout out to all the guys over there and all the supporters of Pub Sports Radio. Really do appreciate all you guys. Uh, me and Weezy, like I said, will be going live on Sunday for Stat Diggers, and then we'll be going live on Tuesday once more for the DraftKings show. Um, tomorrow... We do this the um the best bet show, right? Me, Wheezy, Narco Cop, and Narco Cop will not be able to make it, unfortunately, but it will be me and Wheezy, and we're looking to get maybe one or two more guys on there. Uh looking to go live. We'll say one o'clock PM Eastern time. Um, but we'll set it for there. One o'clock PM Eastern time tomorrow. Best bet. Tune in, me, Wheezy, and we're gonna be looking to see to uh get some more guys on there as well with us. Uh, very fun show. Looking forward to doing that every Saturday. And uh, again, one o'clock. PM Eastern time. Usually it's one hour prior to the to the fights, but cannot do that this week. So I say we get into it, guys. I want to quickly go quickly go through some of these fights and get out of here. Talk some bets along the way. Omar Morales, Jonathan Pierce. And yeah, it's a very interesting fight. Um, you know, Jonathan Pierce brings a lot of things that I like and a lot of things that I, I that I dislike from him. What I do like is this guy is very exciting to watch. He's very fun. He puts on a pace that most people cannot keep up with. Very good wrestling. Um, the things I don't like about him is how hittable this guy is. Very hittable, very sloppy in everything he does. Um, I believe he has 14 fights. I think 12 of them have, have finished inside the distance. Omar Morales has not shown to be much of a finisher with a 63% finish rate, but with how hittable and how exposed Pierce is in the striking game, I wouldn't be shocked if Morales cracked him and knocked him out. Or Morales, I believe, is a black belt as well. I wouldn't be shocked if Pierce shot in a sloppy takedown and maybe got his maybe got caught in a submission. So what I did for this fight was I took the fight, doesn't go to decision. I have half a unit on it at plus 115. I think it covers both sides, right? Like if Morales wins, yeah, it could be a decision, but I think more so maybe he does knock him out. Maybe he does submit him. On the flip side, if Pierce does win, I could see him overwhelming Morales um, with that pace and maybe Morales slowing down as the fight goes on and maybe a Pierce late finish. So I uh, took a shot at there, plus money. Uh, as far as DK goes, I think it's a, a pretty solid fight to target for the Pierce side, especially the pace he puts on. If Pierce wins, he's going to score a lot of drafting points, tons of takedowns, tons of control time, tons of strikes. Um, and if he does win, maybe he doesn't finish himself, a 90% finish rate from Pierce. So, yeah, I do like that fight doesn't go half a unit on it, plus 115. Don't hate that. Uh, starting the night off with some violence, hopefully. Thomas in the chat. What is up, Th uh, Thomas? A legend in Vegas and still doing live content for sure. Would not miss it no matter what. Um, how about the, you're talking about John Jones, the, the John Jones arrest. Um, should we pretend to be shocked? I mean, it sucks. I'm a big John Jones fan. I know people hate him, but yeah, that, it's hard. It's hard to defend the guy, right? It's, it's hard to defend the guy, but, 
Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens next. Jonathan Pierce looked good. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Coming to Vegas so I can dunk on you, Big Brown. I don't know about that, PayPal. You can try. Um, Morales didn't look uh, too good in his last uh, fight against Shane Young, but worried about how hittable Pierce. Yeah, that's a big concern. If Pierce was more like defensively sound, I'd probably be betting Pierce here, but he's just so hittable, so so exposed in terms of you know being able to get hit hard. And um, Morales is not much of a knockout threat, but I, I think he could potentially knock out Pierce here. So we move on to the next fight. Matthew Semmelsberger going against uh, Martin Sano. And yeah, I mean, Semmelsberger is going to more than likely win this fight, more than likely win it inside the distance. If I was to bet this fight, and I'm not yet, but Semmelsberger by KO minus 135, I think that could be a decent spot to look at. I think I saw it on FanDuel Sportsbook, uh, minus 125 if you have access to that as well. So that might be something I look at is the, the Semmelsberger side of things, but He's minus what? He's minus five ten now. We don't know much about Sano. Sano's coming off of a huge layoff. Uh, maybe he has made improvements, but if he's going to have to make a ton of improvements to be even competitive in this fight, from you know, from what I've saw from Sano, very hittable, no takedown defense, no gas tank. I think Semmelsberger is just going to overwhelm him and probably knock him out. Um, as far as DK goes, Semmelsberger, I do like him quite a bit. Sano, I did not much get much of him there at that price tag. There's just so many question marks about this fight. I think Semmelsberger is a solid parlay piece, I guess. I didn't parlay him personally, and I don't have um, any parlays on this card outside of the one I had two legs last week, one leg this week, because I just don't trust a lot of these big favors, and there's just a lot of question marks in this fight in general. But Semmelsberger absolutely should go out here and smash this guy unless Sano has made improvements, which we don't know. So too many red flags for me, too many question marks for me to put money on it. But I think Semmelsberger more than likely does get the job done and does get it done in, in probably dominant fashion as well. What is up, Freddie? Brady, what up on a Friday? What is up, Freddie? How you doing? What's What fight are you looking forward to most from a fan perspective? Uh, yeah, I'll say the Diaz-Lawler fight is up there. Um, the euros Medic turner fight as well is up there. What else? I mean, there's so many good fights like Dan Hooker, Hack Brass is going to be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to Marab and, and Marias, like a lot of these fights. Like pretty much, I don't see a, a bad fight on this card. Yeah, I don't see a bad fight on this card. I mean, maybe Santos Monteferi is the worst one, but even that, like I have some interest in. Uh, Steve saying Lawler by decision lock. I will not be putting any money on that fight, but I'll be looking forward to watching it. Um... Adam, what's up, Adam? Brady, what's good? It started following NFL. I need you for that, too. Now, my guy, yeah, NFL. been doing a lot of NFL content. been very busy. Appreciate you hanging out, Adam. Um, good. It's a great card. Yeah, it's a great card. We did lose Man on Fiora, which sucks. I'm a big Man on Fiora guy, but you know we still have a pretty good, a pretty good card here. So I say we move up the card, and this will be my biggest play of the card, and this will make or break my night. If... This fight does not finish. It'll be a bad night more than likely unless you know something crazy happens, which uh, maybe it can. But if, if this fight does finish, it's going to probably be a good night. I have two and a half units invested on the fight doesn't go to decision. Minus 190. Uh, you can even get that on some, but I think like five dimes had it like minus 160 for some reason. It's now minus 170 on there. Um, I think uh, FanDuel and DraftKings both have it at a, at a better price than minus 190 as well. And well, first of all, both guys have 100% finish rates. Euros Manich has only seen the second round once, and in that second round, he finished his opponent within the first 50 seconds. And I think it's more so Medic early or Turner late, or, or Turner can even finish early himself. So um, don't really care who wins this one. I'm just looking for a finish. I think Euros Manich is more than capable of coming out here and giving Turner his fourth knockout loss. Turner's been knocked out four times. As a pro, he actually got knocked out as an amateur as well. And then Turner, you know, he's fought the better competition. He's more experienced. Um, he's been to a he's been to a second round, a third round. Uh, he's been to a decision. He hasn't won it, but he's been to a decision before. And he, he's well rounded. I think he's a brown belt on BJJ. Very dangerous with his submissions. Very dangerous in his striking as well. And I have seen some holes in Medic's game that I do think is going to be exposed soon. Don't know if it's this fight, but. I've seen him taken down by really sketchy competition, and I'm curious to see what happens if this fight does get extended, but I don't think this is a fight we're going to have to worry about that. I see this fight going um, under. I, I see it going under the one and a half rounds. I see it going – I don't see it going to round three, and I also have a half unit bet on the fight. Won't start round three at plus 100. So three units total invested into this fight, finishing. If it finishes, it'll probably be a good night. If it doesn't, we're going to have to make up a lot of ground, but – um, I do think there's a good chance it does finish as far as DK this is going to be, or it is. 
It is my second highest owned exposed fight outside of the main event. I had to make my lineups before I left for Vegas. So um, hoping none of these fights fall off or I'm going to be absolutely sh screwed. So um, yeah, so that that's something to worry about there. But hopefully all these fights do stay on. But yeah, give me some violence there. Give me some violence. Matt is laying the wood on Euros. Yeah, it looks like money's coming in on Jalen Turner. I saw it at a pick'em on Bet Online a few hours ago. So yeah, money's coming in on Turner there. And uh, oh, he's a personal friend. There you go. Well, hopefully he gets it done for you, and hopefully he gets it done inside the distance for me. <laughs> David's going about sixty-five percent Medich and thirty-five percent Turner on DK. But you got to have this fight on one hundred percent of your lamps. Yeah, I have it about about one hundred percent. Not one hundred percent, but about one hundred percent. Daz saying hit the like. I agree. Let's get those likes up. Uh, Maddie taking two and a half units straight and two units inside the distance. Yeah, if he wins inside the distance, it's going to be a, a monster night for you. And then you're hedging with the fight doesn't go. There you go. Yeah, I just like covering both sides, right? Fight doesn't go decision. Covers both sides. Covers Medich early. Covers Turner early or late. Lock of the night. What's the lock of the night? Medich? Is Medich a lock of the night? Or the fight doesn't go decision is lock of the night? Tony, okay. I hope so. I hope I cash that. It is. It's tough. It's not only tough seeing that go 15 minutes. It's tough seeing that go five minutes. So, um, it it all depends. Like, is, is Herb if Herb Dean is refing? If Herb Dean's refing, it, it probably doesn't hit because Medish is going to have to knock him out maybe six or seven times before he stops the fight. But if Herb Dean is not refing, I think that should hit. But hopefully, if I see Herb, I'm gonna <laughs> maybe cash. I know, just kidding. But hopefully, Herb's not refing. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah I agree. I mean, it's 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 my I don't have a lock of the night. But um, it's my favorite play. I'll say that. How many euros should I put on euros? There you go. I like it. Um, uh, you like Marab? You're betting 1K on Marab. Yeah, I think Marab gets it done as well. <laughs> Herb D. Yeah. Uh, come on, Herb. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Herb Dean guy, but man, Montel Jackson knocked out Bays like, what, five times? Come on. And it wasn't all Herb Dean's fault. It was Montel Jackson's fault as well. All right, what's up, James? Hanging out. Okay, we'll move on to the next fight on the card. And Cody Brundage going against Nick Maximoff. So look at this. Nick Maximoff opened up minus 350, and he's now minus 140. He's all he's, he's like minus 115 on some books as well. This fight is closing up, and maybe, maybe the line flips. And you know, for me, it's it's a close fight. Like this is a very close fight. So I do see why the line is getting close. You take a look at Brundage. Um, wrestling experience in high school and college, very solid wrestler. Um, you know, in terms of pure jujitsu, you probably give that to Maxima, but yeah, the wrestling Brundage is very impressive. And Brundage is also the more well-rounded fighter. I've seen Brundage go out there and, and do some striking where Maximov, I've seen literally no striking at all from him. He Maximov is somebody that comes in there and he shoots takedowns within the first 10 seconds. And, you know, I, I like that, but I just like to see more of a Maximov. And this is a fight I just have no interest in. If anything, the fight doesn't go to decision. I saw on, I think it was William Hill at plus 110, and I don't have access to that book um, unless I go to the sports book, which maybe I do. Um, plus 110, fight doesn't go to decision, right? On, I forget what, what uh, on Bet Online, I think it is, or 5 9, minus 170, fight doesn't go to decision. So there's a big discrepancy between those books. So if you have William Hill, I, I'd probably take a shot at that fight doesn't go to decision at plus 110 if that is a legit line in real. Um, I don't know because I don't have the sports book, but yeah, that stuck out to me. I think it's a good violence spot. I think it's a really good violence spot. Both guys finishers, 83% finish rate between the two. Maximov, I, I want to say he's a, a brown belt in BJJ. Very solid grappler, competes in grappling tournaments outside of MMA. But yeah, it's a tough fight. I, I want nothing to do with it. Um, I was already very sketched out about Maximov in the Carl Roberson fight. And I'm just, I'm even more sketched out now. I mean, Brunage coming in on short notice. Remind you, he was supposed to fight on the contender series, I think next week. So he should be fine in terms of the cardio, but just so many question marks still for me in this fight. A fight I want to sit back and watching and sit back and watch. You're going to see a lot of ground exchanges, a lot of wrestling, a lot of grappling in this fight, and uh, it's a tough fight. I see why people took the plus money shot on Brunage, though. I'll say that he's more well rounded. I, I get that, but I, you know, Maximov, I kind of like this guy. I kind of like his style. He fights smart. He fights to his strengths, and, and you got to like guys like that. So as far as a pick, I'll I'll stick with Maximov. Not putting any money on it. Even if it went to like plus money, I, I probably still would pass on it. Just so many red flags for me in this fight. In terms of DraftKings, I think it's a very important fight here. Both guys are low priced, and I see a lot of takedowns, a lot of control time. So I kind of split it up, not 50-50. I went a little bit more on the uh, 
went a little bit more on the Maximoff side, but regardless, I do have a decent amount of this fight just because of the price tags and the grappling upside. Um, any thoughts about Giga Chikadze? Yeah, Giga has earned my respect. He has. There you go. Shout out to Giga. I have a feeling Brundage will win. He was ragdolling William Knight before a vicious KO'd. Uh, Maximov was getting reversed by Kota. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, hey, you can still adjust your DK lineups in Nevada. I did not know that. Um, as long as you set them before. Well, there you go. Did not know that. I was scared to even open up the DraftKings app. I don't want to get uh, kicked off or anything. But yeah, there you go. Thank you for letting me know. If I if I need to adjust the lineups, if a fight falls off, I will I will do so. Appreciate that. Two cents in the chat. What is up, two cents? Best of luck tomorrow to you as well. Good card. It's a good card. This is a worse, ma a worse matchup for Maximov than Roberson. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you weren't kidding. <laughs> I had Montel, yeah, I had Montel Jackson inside the distance, and I've never been more. Uh, yeah, that was one of the worst bad beats of the year for me. It's between that and when Alain Patrick quit in that fight against Mason Jones. Those are the two worst bad beats I've had this year. That was just hard to watch. I mean, how many guy, how many times do you have to knock a guy out, right? Oh, goodness. Who knows these unknowns? It's just a guessing game sometimes. Brundage would have probably been a favorite against Roberson. Mm, you think? I don't know. I thought Roberson was kind of getting disrespected in the Maximov fight at that line, but then again, you take a look at Roberson, no takedown defense, so maybe. Hit the like button, me. I agree. Let's get those like buttons up. William Hill, yeah, I'm going to have to check out the sports book. Shout out to Dave. Ryas, best dog on the card. We'll talk about it. Marab has never beat anybody as good as Marias. I agree. What's up, Zayed? Uh, what's up, Brady? Let's win some cash tomorrow. Let's win some cash. Um, you got some parlays with Tyler. You have a parlay with her as well. Money, money coming in. All right, we'll move on to the next fight. Shout out to Sosa. Tyler Santos going against Rox and Montefiore. This is going to close out a parlay that I had last week. Uh, the two legs hit uh, Blanchfield and the Sarukian. And then I have Santos to end the parlay. Minus 123, 1.25 units. And, yeah, I like uh, Santos here to to get it done. I think she's better in every aspect. Me, I think she's better in every aspect of MMA. I mean, I just don't see where you can give Roxanne Modafferi an advantage here. Um, yes, Roxanne does, you know, pull stuff out of her hat at times, winning winning as a big dog against Macy Barber, against Andrea Lee. Um, but against Atala Santos, I don't know. I just don't know where she's going to. I mean, is she going to take Santos down and, and control? I just don't see. It. Is she going to outstrike Santos? No. Um, so I think Santos can win pretty much however she wants. If she wants to keep this on the feet for 15 minutes, although I don't rate Santos as striking all that high, I think it's going to be enough to outstrike a Roxanne Montefiore. And then we've seen Santos be able to take Molly McCann down a ton of times and, and dominate her. Jillian Robertson, who is more dangerous of a grappler than Mata Ferry on bottom. She was able to take her down for 15 minutes and dominate her the entire fight. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, I'll, I just don't – it's hard to see Roxanne Mata Ferry pulling it off, but, I mean, she has pulled it off as a dog before. Antonina Shevchenko, Macy Barber, Andrea Lee. Um, but against Salas Santos, I don't know. As far as DK goes, this is going to be my lowest owned uh, fight on the entire card. I don't have the exact ownerships pulled up for me, but um, I don't have much Santos at that price tag. I don't have much Montefiore as well. And yeah, I, I like Santos to close out the parlay. What is she at? Minus 400 right now. I want to see what I parlayed her last week. Last week, I parlayed her at minus 365. So the line's moving a little bit. I think I saw Santos at minus 450 on some books as well. Yeah, I like Santos here. I like Santos here quite a bit. Outside of Roxanne Montefiore taking, like that's her path to victory, taking her down and controlling her. And I just see that being way too hard to do. She's going to be at a, a very big strength disadvantage. She doesn't have that wrestling to get somebody down, unless it's like an Andrea Lee who has no takedown defense or a Antina Shevchenko, but this is Tala Santos. So I like Tala Santos. Hopefully she gets it done. I think she will. But if she, like she on the entire card, She's probably the one that I'd feel most comfortable with parlaying outside of Valentina Shevchenko, who's minus 2,000. But a lot of these big favorites, I just, I'm just i sketched out about. Like Curtis Blades is a big favorite. Heavyweight fight. 
Um, you know, Marab Davalashvili, I'm kind of sketched out about. Matt Semmelsberger has some um, some question marks with Sano in that fight. So if I was to make a parlay, Santos would be in it. Uh, but I, I do like the parlay I had from last week. Got those last two legs, and hopefully Santos does come through. And she is my most one of my most confident picks on the card. And it is Roxy's birthday. I believe it's today. Yeah, I believe her birthday is today. So happy birthday to Roxy. Very fun fighter. Fan favorite. I get it. But in terms of, of this fight, I just don't see it. Uh, Santos by decision seems the way to go. I agree. Um, Roxy's very, very tough, very durable. She did get cracked in her, in her one fight against Lauren Murphy a couple fights ago, but very durable. Um, You see at the face-offs, Alexander said to Ortega, I didn't know you're popping, and that's not cool to cheat. But yeah, I saw that. Yep. So that, yeah. Um, Josh puking or sick for some reason. Um, Oh, talk about this. <laughs> Tyler Santos, Miranda Maverick, Amanda Nunez, and Chris Cyborg in my dream night. I don't know what you mean by, by dream night. Um, maybe in terms of, of them, them going out there and fighting. I, I hope that's what you mean, Sosa. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, Gagosha talking about the, the DS fight. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Five years of clubbing. I get it. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll talk about that soon. Tyler hasn't fought with fans since her debut. That's scary, right? Because she looked horrible in her debut. So hopefully there's no anxiety. If there is anxiety, um, I think she still wins, but hopefully there's no anxiety or nothing like that. Dave is saying the nerves will come back. If 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 uh, Santos having a, like an anxiety attack is Roxy's path to victory, then, then so be it. Santos all day, but respect to Montefiore considering she made her UFC debut about at, at 35 years old. Amazing she had as much UFC success as she did. I agree. Respect to her. I think she said she had uh, like 49 fights for Roxy. So, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> Roxy's striking. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, not the best, not the best striking in the world, but she's improved a little bit. Santos, Roxy over two and a half. Probably juiced to the max. I, you got to believe, right? Uh, the fight goes to decision is around like minus 230. So that's probably like minus 300 around there. G uh, chalky, but I think it hits. Rob versus Marias for optimal. That You think the winner is going to be optimal, and I, I can't really disagree there, Noah. I think if Marab wins, it's a bunch of takedowns. It's a lot of strikes, and I think if Marias wins, it's probably a first-round finish, so I get that. Just got on Shev Shevchenko, plus 1,200. VS submission rounds two or three. I looked at the round it's just hard to, to tell which which round she's gonna finish her in, right? Uh <laughs> you know what he's talking about. I hope he's not <laughs> dream night. Come on. Uh Santa's easy. Yeah, I think she does win. What's up, Dom? How you doing? Thoughts on Nazareth Hackbrast? We'll talk about that or we'll talk about it. Okay, so Moving on to the next fight, we have Chris Dawkins going against Shamil Abrakimov. I do have a bet on this. I have half a unit on Chris Dawkins winning inside the distance, plus 110. Just, uh, you know, Shamil is, is, is very underrated, right? But there's just a lot of things going against him. Two-year layoff. He's now 40 years old, coming off of a, a, a punctured lung, dealing with a ton of health issues outside of the cage, pulling out of fights left and right. Chris Dawkins, young in terms of being a heavyweight, 31 years old. He's been looking dominant. Um, this will be a step up in competition, but I think it is a step up. He does pass. I like Chris Dawkins. I like him by knockout. I like him probably by first round knockout, but I did take the the inside the distance just in case. It covers a sub. He has a black belt supposedly in BJJ, so just wanted to you know be extra safe. I think the K was was not much of a much of a price difference there, so I just took the inside the distance to be safe. But yeah, I think Chris Dawkins does pass this test. Shamil, there's too many things going against him. Uh, so I do like Dawkins to get it done there. I like Dawkins on DK. I think he has that first round upside in terms of getting a knockout there. And yeah, 40 years old, punctured long, two year layoff, pulling out of it just doesn't sound good, right? So give me Chris Dawkins. I think he does continue his dominant streak against Shamil here. I think it's one of those fights where they're setting Dawkins up to get uh, a name on his record somewhat. Valentina is my all-time fave. My all-time fave women's fighter is going to be Amanda Nunez, but yeah, Valentina's up there for me for sure. Um, serious question, Brady. Do you think Murphy can last over one and a half rounds with Valentina? 
after doing tape study doubt it. Yeah, that's the that's the problem, right? I just don't know. Like, I think Valentina Shevchenko could win whenever she wants. It's up to it's up to her, right? Like, if she wants to go out there and finish Murphy in the first round, I absolutely think she should. But she's somebody that kind of takes her time, right? She takes her time. I could see it getting extended over that one and a half rounds. But with that one and a half, you're probably laying like minus like 400 at least on that over one and a half. So I personally don't think it's worth it. I could see a first round stoppage, maybe early second round stoppage. But for me, I do think it gets extended somewhat, maybe like a third or fourth round fifth fifth finish. But um, it could be any round, to be honest with you. Doc is by KO 100%. 100%. Yeah, I like it. I think Chris Doc is, is way overrated. Um, he could, he could be, I just, I think he's making some improvements, right? He quit his police officer, officer job. He was a full-time police officer. This is the best shape he's been in his life. Um, you take a look at his fights in 2015, right? Compare him to what he looks like now. This is the best version of Chris Dawkins and he's only 31. That's young for heavyweight. So is he overrated? We'll find out. This is a good test, right? If, if he's overrated, yeah, Shamil probably beats Amir. But if he's not overrated, I, I think he does run through Shamil. But we'll see. What's up, Sean? Let's go. Let's go, Sean. Doc, yep, Doc is getting slimmer with each fight. We're giving up a ton of size on this one. Yep, you're right. But yeah, he's looking in good shape. Um, Let's see here. Shevchenko by unanimous decision. It's just hard to see. It's hard to see uh, Murphy. I know Murphy's never been finished, but she's never fought Valentina. But yeah, if you think she wins by decision, unanimous plus 250, could be worth a could be worth a stab. I just I really think she finishes her. Um, I don't think Murphy is that bad. This is for sure going over three rounds. I <laughs> I mean, I personally don't think she's that great. I mean, she lost her last fight against Joanne Calderwood, right? Like. She lost the first and third round. She lost against Andrea Lee. She, like, who has she beat legitly in the past couple fights? Aliyah, Aliyah Shakarova? We'll see. I, I think uh, Shevchenko just makes it look... I mean, she made it look easy against Jessica Andraj. Uh Murphy is the best ever seen her. I mean, she just lost her last fight. What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Best Best shape? Best shape? Uh, Dawkins says more rules and then a bakery. I don't know about that. All right, so we will move on to the next fight. And we have Dan Hooker going against Nazrat Hackbrast. And yeah, interesting fight here. Um, I like Dan Hooker. There were so many question marks and red flags coming into fight week. Um, the long plane fight flight for both guys coming in a couple days early or like a day early, cutting weight the next day. And both guys went out there and, and made weight. So you got to think if both guys do come in here 100%, and maybe they're not because Dan Hooker had a, a very long flight. I think it's like around maybe almost 20 hour flight from where, you know. And then if he is at 100%, though, I, I do like Dan Hooker here. It's just I, I don't know. And he did get knocked down in his last fight against Michael Chandler. But again, that's Michael Chandler. Nazareth Hackbrast is fighting guys like Rafa Garcia, getting knocked out by Drew Dober. Whereas Dan Hooker, you know, is fighting, you know, Dustin Poirier, Paul Felder, guys like that. I think the level of competition is just crazy in this fight. But maybe Dan Hooker could be on a decline. I mean, he got starched in the first round. We've never seen that out of Dan Hooker. But yeah, I gotta go Dan Hooker here. Um, I think he's the better fighter pretty much everywhere, um, unless he's like shot, which maybe he is. If he if he comes in here not shot and 100, percent I do like Dan Hooker quite a bit. Just not sold on Hack Press. Uh, in terms of betting, though, I just can't get to it. Can't get to a bet here with uh, with all the question marks surrounding fight week and them coming in uh, like a day before cutting weight, a day before weigh-ins. I don't like that for either guy. So I'm going to pass here. I think smart move is going to be passed. Maybe the fight doesn't go to the decision. It could be something to look at, which is minus 120. But for me, I don't have any money on this fight. I'm going to sit back and watch because I do think it's going to be one of the more exciting fights on the entire card. So... I do like Dan Hooker, just not enough to lay money on him. He did look good at weigh-ins. He made weight. That's all good, but still have some slight question marks um, in terms of, you know, is he shot in terms of, you know, how does that long flight affect him in terms of fighting? Yeah, he made weight, but how's it going to affect him in the cage, right? So we'll see, but yeah, just too many question marks for me. How is Hooker a, a prelim? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's one of those cards where the main card is so stacked that it's on the prelims. It's a uh, yeah, going from Rafa Garcia to Dan Hooker. You can't get 
a bigger step up in competition than that. Uh, yeah, props to yeah, I agree. Props to both guys for making weight. Would have been nice of Adana to offer again, yeah, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? You think so, right? Hooker always fights for your money. All jokes. <laughs> oh yeah, I get it. All jokes aside, why was he circling into uh, Chandler's overhand? Terrible IQ. Yeah, he just looked. He looked off in that fight. He looked off. James saying, man, this should be hooker all day. No way he falls off the map like this. Yeah, right? Like, I, I agree. I think it should be a, a good spot for hooker, but too many question marks for me to, to put my money on it. Other than Dan Hooker KO, I don't really see this fight scoring well on DK. Yeah, I don't have much of it. I, I don't have a ton of it. I think it's going to be one of those fights where it's going to be good to you know sit back and watch it, right? Like, I think it's going to be an exciting fight, but in terms of DK, not all the high on it. In terms of betting... Not all the high end as well. Sosa, plug in the, the DFS Discord. Appreciate that, Sosa. Good betting tips. Great community and very active. Yeah, very active. Very active, great community. I agree with you. Sosa's always in there. Sometimes causing trouble. Get into it with PayPal, but yeah, it's a fun time in there always. All right. Let's get moving. Um, Oh, here we go. So this is the last fight before we get on to the main card. And... Yeah, so very interesting. So Bet Online, shout out to Bet Online, opened up the Marab Davalashvili props on Monday. And they opened up Marab by decision plus 275. And I put a half a unit on that. And then uh, about an hour later, it goes to plus 250. Money's coming in on that plus 275 as it should be. And then about an hour later after that, uh, Bet Online completely takes off all of the Marab Marias props. And to my knowledge, I, I don't believe Bet Online has gotten those props back on, which is weird, right? Like they had all the props ready, all the props were out, all of them, on Monday. They took them off on Monday, and, and it's uh, Friday, and they're still not back on. So that's weird. But regardless, I was able to get on early there. I know a lot of people that did as well. Um, Wheezy was doing a um, one of his live streams, and the chat was like blowing up, Rob by decision, plus 275. And I was like, yep, already on it. Uh, cause you have to be right. Like that's how Marab does win fights. And although I'm a little bit skeptical of Marab in this matchup, I think he does win, but man, Marias is going to be the toughest test Marab has had, um, by a decent margin. This is going to be the most dangerous fight that Marab has had by a decent margin. And you take a look at who is, is, is beating Marias, right? You know, very dangerous guys like a Rob font, like a Corey Sanhagen, Henry Cejudo, you know, those are the guys he's losing to, um, you know, very dangerous guys that can that can uh, finish them. You know, you, you have question marks about the durability of Marias, but when you're getting you know finished by guys like Cejudo, guys like Rob Font, Sanhagen, you know, maybe maybe it's that. Does does Marab have the, the same finishing power, um, same finishing ability of those guys? No, nowhere near it. But m what Marab does do is push a crazy pace, and that's where I think it'll benefit him in this fight going against Marias, who has one of the worst gas tanks in the division. He's very good but he's very good for about a round. He is such a, a such a great fighter. We have not seen it as of late. Obviously, he's fighting great competition, but it would not shock me in the slightest if Marias was able to cause some problems at least early, at least early. But the problem is and why I'm ultimately picking Marab and why I did bet him by decision was because if this fight does leave the first round, Marab's going to take over. He's going to put on that pace. He's going to drown Marias. And I don't know if he finishes them like... Um, Marab doesn't finish anybody, but maybe he does. Like, if you do like Marab, I, I'd say, like, either the decision prop or maybe the third round sprinkle for Marab. And if you like Marias, what I also did was I put a quarter unit on Marias to win in round one at plus 950. And the reason I did that, because that line is crazy. That is how he wins the fight. He wins the fight by a round one finish. He doesn't win it by decision. He probably doesn't win it in the third round. He probably doesn't even win it in the second round. If Marias does win, it's in the first round. So I did kind of you know play it both ways here. I, I think I covered a lot of angles of this fight. Either Marab wins by decision or Marias gets that first round finish, which is plus 950. I think I saw it on DraftKings, like plus 1,000 as well. So that's how I attacked it. Um, if you like Marab, um, decision, round three sprinkle. If you like Marias, I, I just think that like the, the inside the distance prop, which is something crazy as well, Marias inside the distance is plus 440. And then Marias in round one, I think, is uh, the way you look as well. But yeah, you got to go Marab, right? Like, I think the pace is going to be too much. The pressure is going to be too much. I think he's going to drown Marias. 
But I would not be shocked if Rice caught him early. I would not be shocked if you know, maybe he snatched up a submission. Rice is very dangerous off his back. I would not be shocked if Rice knocked him out. Marias hits very, very hard, kicks very hard. We've seen him knock out, you know, some some decent guys, some very decent guys. So we'll see what happens, but I'll pick Marab. I just don't feel comfortable about it. I don't feel comfortable putting Marab in a parlay. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, Blades is an easy win. I agree. Who is the most handsome fighter? That's no question. It's Jessica Andrade. Come on. Mariah's second round guillotine choke. Uh, I don't know if you're joking, Melon, but it could happen. It very well could happen. Ricky Simone did it. Ricky Simone did it. So, yeah, we'll see. Marlon looked good at weigh-ins. Um, early stoppage on Marab by points. Hey, I see it the same way. Zaya with the super sticker. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you for the dono, and thank you for hanging out as always. Best of luck to you tomorrow. I need Marab to close at a three-legger with Saruki and Shore, or I'm screwed tomorrow. Hopefully he gets it done. I think he does, but, man, it's going to be a sweaty first round. If you want to hedge, Marais' first round could be a decent hedge, but if you want to let it ride, I think you should be good. Seems like the UFC is trying to get rid of Marias. Uh, give this guy a break. Yeah, right. I know. I know. You think Marias is going to be under 5%? Owned? I don't have my projected ownership up right now, but it was pretty, it wasn't 5% owned, but it was pretty low. Yep. Sosa high on the Georgians. He's always been. Shout out to Sosa. Um, Vito. Hey, Brady. A continuous thank you for your thought and prediction videos. They're pretty helpful. Appreciate that. Appreciate you for watching them. If you guys didn't watch them, then uh, they wouldn't be a thing. So thank you guys so much. Ceremonial weigh-ins are on. Do you have to buy tickets for that separate? No, I think you just go in. I'm not going in. Obviously, I'm, I'm here with you guys, but um, I think you just go in. As far as I'm concerned. Maybe you have to buy tickets. I don't know. All right, so we'll move on to the next fight. Yeah, uh, whew, Jessica Andrade, Cynthia Calvillo. I think Andrade wins this fight. She's fought the much better competition. Yes, she looked bad against Valentina Shevchenko, but that's Valentina Shevchenko. I think she's going to be the more physically strong fighter. I guess the only thing I'm worried about is if Calvillo does take Andrade down and maybe controls her. She was taken down like seven times by Valentina, but again, that's Valentina, right? On the feet, you got to favor Andrade there all day. She's going to be hitting Calvillo very, very hard. I don't, I don't know if she finishes Calvillo. Calvillo's never been finished, but it, it's possible. Um, yeah, I mean, this line, minus 255, is another favorite that I feel is, is very sketchy. I feel like she should win, but just in the back of my head, what happens if Calvillo comes out here, <clears throat> excuse me, just takes her down and lays on her for 15 minutes? But I got to go with Andrade. Like, no props even stick out to me on this one. Even, like, on DraftKings, like, I don't have much interest in this one at all as well. Um should be an interesting fight. Like I, I, I like Jessica Andrade, but I just have some weird, weird feelings about this one. Like I think Andrade should win, but in the back of my head, Calvillo could take her down, control her, but uh, I got to stick with Andrade here. I'm going to take Andrade to win. I'll say dominant decision. I think she's going to beat her up bad on the feet. Like if Calvillo cannot take down a Caitlin Chukagan, right, who has a 50% takedown defense, is she going to be able to take down and control Andrade? I, I kind of lean towards no. But uh, we'll see what happens. Give me Andrade for the win. Um, Blades, TKO, Val decision. Volk decision, parlay of the card. I agree with two out of the three. I think Val does finish. But, yeah, I could see a Valentina dominant decision. Um, Andrade by decision. Calvillo has never been finished. That's true. That's true. That is true. I'm, that's kind of how I'm leaning as well, but just won't bet it. If I went to an event in real life, I would totally go to the weigh-ins. Why not take it in? Yeah, I mean, I thought I think that'd be fun, but I had some stuff to to do. I had two live streams. This one, and I did a, an NFL stream with Billy, so couldn't make it. It's all good. I might be going. They're doing like a meet and greet tomorrow with all the with a bunch of UFC fighters. So I might go to that tomorrow. That should be fun. Aloha, guys. I'm back up. If anybody wants in the main event, pulls out. Shout out to BJ Penn hanging out. Appreciate you hanging out, BJ. Uh, would like to, w wouldn't like to see you back. <laughs> would not like to see you back. You've been on a, been on a tough skid, man. But shout out to you. All right, so we'll keep moving on. Fernando saying over one and a half. Yeah, I think I think over one and a half does hit, but it's probably at, at a crazy price. You got to imagine. All right, so we'll move on.
Curtis Blades, Jarzina Rosenstruck. I do have a bet here. I have Curtis Blades wins by knockout plus 185, half a unit on that. And yeah, I think the submission prop was on FanDuel Sportsbook at like plus 1800. Uh, but Curtis Blades only has one submission on his record, and that was somebody tapping to strike. So I think it's probably a ground and pound victory if Curtis Blades does indeed win. And I've seen Rosenstruck taken down. I've seen him get put into dominant positions against a guy like Junior Albini. Overeem was able to take him down, and when he did take Rosenstruck down, it just showed that Rosenstruck has no get-up game at all. He has no ground game at all, and I think if Blades takes him down, I think he gets into a very dominant position. I think he gets into mount, and I think he just you know rains some ground and pound and just finish him. Of course, it is heavyweight. Rosenstruck's going to have a lot of power. He can catch him on the way in for sure, but this, is, should, this feels like a spot that Blades should, absolutely should go in here and just take him down, just dominate, her, dominate him and, and get him out of here. So I like Blades. I like him. Uh, one of my favorite plays on DraftKings as well. I think he has takedown upside, control time upside. If he does not finish, you've got to expect it's going to be a lot of takedowns and control time, and it's going to rack up through three rounds. But I personally do think he gets him out of there. And it's just crazy, right? You're getting a, a minus 310 heavyweight who's a finisher to finish by knockout at plus 185. That line just seems so off to me. So... I'll take Curtis Blade. I think he does get it done. Um, I should, I should, I should go visit John in, in jail. Yeah, Straight would appreciate it as well. Um, what else we got here? Wins are fun, but they are quick. By the time you get back to your room in Vegas, yeah, they do go by pretty fast. But yeah, I feel like it'd be fun. Uh, one shot, one kill. Hope he upsets. He could, man. Like it wouldn't shock me. That's what he. That's what he does. He hits hard. All right, come on. Frozen Shrook third round triangle choke. Parlay that up, Melon. If that happens, if he gets a third round triangle choke, I will cash app you or PayPal you one thousand dollars. If Frozen Shrook gets a third round triangle choke, you will receive one thousand dollars from me. Book it. You hear. You heard it here first. One K to you if that does happen. Um, I oh, I, I heard that Diaz Rose paid off Simmelsberger for a, a dive. I don't think so. How much was the ticket for the event? I think it was like 300 something, and they weren't good seats to be honest. Uh, but I, I, I'm excited to go. I'm excited to go. Yeah, there's a yeah, I don't think that happens, but we'll see. One, one, one K to you, Mel, if that happens. I hope if that happens tomorrow, I'm gonna I'm gonna be so so upset. I'll, I'll probably cry if that happens, but I don't think it will. All right, next a fight that everybody's looking forward to: Robbie Lawler going against Nick Diaz. A fight where, yeah, I'm just gonna sit back as a fan and I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to enjoy this fight. I'm going to enjoy this fight. But as far as you know, betting on this fight, I just don't really see how anybody could like this fight. There's a lot of sketchy fights on the card in terms of a betting perspective. And this is number one on that list, right? Like Nick Diaz has not fought in six and a half years. Nick Diaz has not won in nearly 10 years. Robbie Lawler. He's on a, on a skid himself. He has not been looking good. Like who knows what's going to happen in this fight? Who knows? And then on top of that, like we see money pouring in on Robbie Lawler after there was a video of Diaz shadow boxing, for pictures <laughs> and that line went from like minus 115 to minus 140 real fast i don't know guys um if i was picking as a fan i'd pick diaz I'm, i've never been a big robbie lawler guy but as far as picking you know and, and being serious about it I'm, I'm gonna pick lawler for the reason of you know being more active i think that's huge one guy has been looking bad but being active in Robbie Lawler, whereas Nick Diaz has not won a fight in about 10 years. So I'm going to pick Robbie Lawler. Am I going to put money on it? Absolutely not. You would never, ever see me betting on this fight ever. But as a fan, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to enjoy it. It's going to be a great fight. I don't want to put any money on it. If you put money on this fight, good luck. I just don't really see how, how one person can have a, a really strong read one way or another. Like any thing can happen. Like how's, how's Diaz going to look after this layoff, right? Like is, is Robbie Lawler shot or, or is he not? So who knows? Great fight. Great fight. Don't get me wrong. But as far as betting on it, I don't know. Maybe Nick will use his black belt. Maybe Lawler by decision. Vegas is going to win a lot of money. That line, yeah, that line was funny. You saw that video, and then like a couple seconds later, boom, there it goes. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree, Tom. Just just sit back, enjoy, just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Uh, Lawler has not been bad like Woodley. True. James saying Brady, my Google Pay is all messed up, so I'm never able to tip on here. Uh, check your cash up. Oh, appreciate that, James. Shout out to you. Appreciate you. Yeah, James is always hanging out in the chat. Always very active in there. Shout out to him. Um, it depends on the ref. If it's, yeah, if it's Herb Dean, then uh, Lawler by decision. Any other ref, it's Lawler by KO. Yeah, if, if it's Herb Dean, you know what's going to decision apparently. Oh, what if you what if you bet that Diaz will taunt Robbie? He's uh, is there a, is there? A, I'm sure there is probably a prop for that, right? Maybe I could see it. Um, Lawler would have KO'd Jake Paul. I kind of, I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like when Vittoria had his shorts on backwards, I knew that man was going to lose. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, you can't really take a lot from, uh, I'm shadow boxing for four pictures. Right. But I'll admit it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good look, but we'll see. Some good money on the fight, not going the distance, and I don't think two old dudes can go for 25. So fight doesn't go to the to decision is plus money, plus 120. I mean, maybe, right? Um, both guys are pretty durable, though. That's the only thing. But we'll see. Half a unit on Robbie. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'm picking him to win, but I just can't bet it. But yeah, best, best of luck to anybody that does bet this fight. Shout out to Dylan. Dylan hanging out. $2 dono. Appreciate you, Dylan, for hanging out. And appreciate the dono as well. All right. So we'll get into the co-main event. I have 150 of you hanging out here on a Friday. Started about 15 minutes early. I have some stuff to do. I have some stuff I want to do. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I want to get out of here kind of early. So we have about five more minutes left, and I'll probably head out. And yeah, Valentina Shevchenko. I mean, we can we can uh, skim through this one, right? Like Valentina, she's going to win, but how does she win? I personally think she wins inside the distance. It's now at minus one seventy for Valentina inside the distance. There's money coming in on the on the decision line, which I get it. Murray Murphy is very tough. Never been never been finished, but she's never faced anybody um, like Valentina Shevchenko, right? Like as a as Aaliyah Shakarova. Is Aaliyah Shakarova going to present a a serious challenge like a Valentina Shevchenko? Is Joanne Calderwood going to present um, a lot of danger in the fight like a Shevchenko? Who else we got up here? Um, is Roxanne Montefiore very dangerous? Is she very dangerous like Valentina? Is Andrea Lee's dangerous, right? No. Laura Morella Barella? She's dangerous. No. Come on. C.R. Eubanks, Barb Honchak. Caitlin Chukagan, Sarah McMahon, Liz Carmouche. None of these fighters are anywhere near the caliber of Valentina Shevchenko. Like, not even close. Not even close. Like, no. No. No, 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 no. I, I think Valentina finishes more Murphy um, however she wants. If, it, if she wants it to be early, it'll be early. If she wants it to be late, it'll be late. Murphy is very tough. I'll give her that. But I think as the fight goes on, she's going to just take an absolute beating. Um, I'll personally say probably third, fourth, or fifth round, but it can honestly be in any round. Give me Shevchenko here. I think she's safe in cash game. She is in my cash lineup. And uh, about as safe as you can get, right? Minus 2,000 favor, just about. I'm going to monitor and see where that Valentina Shevchenko inside the distance line goes. Like I said, money's coming in on the decision prop. I want Valentina inside the distance at minus 170. It's tempting. It's tempting, but I, I want a little bit of a better price. So that might be a bet I la I add on before I go to the fights. Valentina inside the distance, if that line does keep coming down, which I do see it coming down. I think on five dimes, it was like minus one, I want to say like minus 140, something like that, minus 150, which is which is pretty good. So we'll see what happens. Um, The bullet is going to execute Murphy with a shin to the dome. Yeah, any way she wants. If she wants to take her down and submit her, <laughs> wait, wait, I can't, I can't read, I can't read that, Andrew. But that's that's pretty funny. Uh, I got plus four fifty on Val sub. I think you'd be a sub or a KO. That's the only thing. Melon Lauren Murphy wins in the fourth minute of the third round when she drops her with an overhand, gets mount, and locks in a inverted triangle. 
Melon, if, if that happens, if that happens, I'll give you my car. I'll give you that car if that exact sentence happens. Screenshot it if it happens. I'll send you over the keys when I get back. Um, the Hulk and Rong Zhu looked good last week. Yeah, they did. 0 0.2 units on Murphy, 9-1 odds. I don't know, man. I just, I just don't see it. Reminds me of people when they were betting on Megan Anderson. Just There's just no point. There's just no point. Don't bet, don't bet against greatness. Don't bet against Valentina. Don't bet against Nunez. Don't bet against Khabib. I learned that a long time. Don't do it. You're just going to lose. It's going to lose money to doing that. Yep, Armin is the real deal, 100%. But I say we get into the main event, and then I'll go through my final bets. I don't have a lot of action this week. Um, keeping it really small. I have a big play on the, on the fight doesn't go and the fight does not start round three for Turner and Medich, but it's a, it's a really sketchy week and um, looks like a, a good parlay card. But when you really dig into it, I just don't trust a lot of these favorites. Volkanovsky going against Ortega Volkanovsky minus 175 or take a plus 150. I do like the Volkanovsky side here. I like him by decision as well. If I was to bet something in this fight, it probably would be Volkanovsky by decision, which is plus 120 Ortega is very, very tough. Only knockout loss was that was that stoppage against Max Holloway, right? Um, I like Volkanovski to win minutes of this fight. I think he's going to throw a ton of volume. Brian Ortega, although he it looks like he's made some improvements, still very, very hittable. The only thing and why I have not bet Volkanovski and why I'm not betting Volkanovski, just how dangerous Brian Ortega is, right? Obviously, on the mat, he's extremely dangerous if it does get there. On the feet, he showed how dangerous he was um, against Korean Zombie. He hurt him two times very bad. Like that spinning back elbow would have knocked out anybody else in the division outside of a, a Korean zombie. But yeah, just a, just a danger aspect of Ortega is kind of scaring me off a little bit. If you do like Ortega, I'd say inside the distance at plus 250, which you see right there. Ortega inside the distance is plus 250. Volkanovski inside the distance is plus 325. So that's telling you right there that the bookies think that if there is a finish, it's probably on the Ortega side, and I 100% agree with that. And if Volkanovski wins, I do think it's by decision. So if you like the Volk side decision, if you like Ortega inside the distance, um, even like any problem, like the fight doesn't go, like if you like Volkanovski, the fight goes to decision, it's probably what you want. If you like Ortega, fight doesn't go to decision, it's probably what you want. In terms of DraftKings, this is a fight that is going to be, or it is, my highest exposed fight on the entire card. Uh, but yeah, I'll pick Volkanovski. Uh, another fight where no money on this one. Invet more invested on the drafting side of things, but I'll pick Volkanovski to win. Would it shock me if Ortega hurt Volkanovski? No, not at all. He's so dangerous anywhere the fight goes. And he looked improved. He looked much improved in the in the Korean zombie fight. But um, just because I think Volkanovski is going to be winning minutes of this fight, I'm going to pick him. But you can't count on Ortega here, I don't think. Um yeah, just don't don't bet against greatness. It just doesn't work out. Like John Jones, even I know people hate John Jones, but and I know he's been you know arguably losing some of these fights. It just it doesn't seem to work out. If Volk, yeah, if Volk wins, you got to imagine he's optimal, right? Eighty six hundred, way too cheap. When he does win, it's usually over hundred points. Uh, man, this way I'm gonna check out the weigh-ins sometime tonight. Probably missed it. Sorry, I have to bet the yeah. No, no shame in that. If you like Ortega, take him inside the distance. Get a little bit more, uh, a little more juice on that. Um, my mom's heading to Vegas. Yep, my mom and dad are coming down to Vegas as well. Enjoy your flight, mom. Travel safe. See you tonight. Whole family's coming down here. Shout out to them. Um. Ortega looked like a zombie at the weigh-ins. Yeah, he looked bad against the Korean zombie at weigh-ins, right? So I think I think it'll be fine. Oh, uh, bet against greatness when they change weight classes potentially. John Jones arrested again. Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I, I want to say I couldn't believe that, but I'd be lying if I said that, right? Like, it just sucks. Ortega equals boy. Volk equals man. I don't know about that, but I'll quickly go over my bets and then answer any final questions or, or bring up any final comments you guys have. Let's see. Uh, okay. So closing out the parlay from last week, Blanchfield, Sarukin got the job done. Now Santos minus 123. 
1.25 units. Next is my big play of the night, uh, Medich Turner. Fight does not go to decision. Two and a half units, minus 190, and the fight does not start round three, plus 100, half a unit on that. Rob Devalish, really, Marlon Marias. I covered it both sides. I think uh, Rob Devalish really wins by decision, plus 275, half a unit, and then Marias wins by round one, or round wins in round one, a quarter unit, plus 950. Uh, Chris Dawkins wins inside the distance, half a unit, plus 110. Curtis Blades wins inside the, wins by KO, plus 185, half a unit. And then Morales Pierce, fight does not go to decision, plus 115, half a unit on that as well. Folk takes the leg out early and finishes in the later rounds. Maybe, uh, I don't see, uh, maybe he can get a late finish, but Ortega's so tough. Folk Ortega will not go the distance, too much bad blood. Both guys want an emphatic win, maybe. T City baby, let's get this dub. Um, Marias is Morales is James Krause's triple down lock of the night. Are you serious? Morales, Marias or Morales? Morales, Omar Morales. Okay, yeah, I'm picking him to win, but I'm, I'm targeting the fight isn't good decision instead. Stock saying for real, for real, for real. Bald folk. Valentina said she is looking for a quick finish, and so that is my parlay. She said that. I think she does as well. Uh, just catching this, you confident in Turner? No, no, no. I'm not confident in Turner, but what I am pretty confident in is the fight doesn't go to decision. I think Medich is very capable of starching him early, but uh, I, I like covering at both sides there. Can't wait to bet gone over Jones if he ever moves up to head. I don't know if Jones will be fighting anytime, anytime soon. <laughs> Anytime soon. Muhammad saying hello. Hello. How you doing? Shout out to Muhammad for hanging out. Coming in last second. Jonathan Pierce is from Fright Ready. Yes, he is. Benjamin Hype for the card. Yeah, I am as well. This card is phenomenal. I'm looking forward to it. Free Jones. Yep. Free Jones, man. Sucks. But <laughs> come, I can't believe it. It sounded like he was changing it around. But no. Same old Jones. So... I'm going to head out of here, guys. Lots going on. Um, so I am doing two contests, two giveaways on my prediction video and also my betting breakdown video, which I got out a couple days earlier. So that's out. I'll be going live 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time tomorrow for Best Bet with me and Uncle Wheezy. And we're going to look to get maybe one or two more guys on the Best Bet show as well. So that should be fun as always. Always a great thing to do on Saturdays. And then we'll be back on Sunday on Pub Sports Radio for Stat Diggers with me and Uncle Wheezy going over the card next week. So thank you for hanging out. Had a decent amount of people in here. Um, see you guys soon. Good luck. Appreciate you for hanging out. Zayed free Jones. Dave says, all right, guys, we'll see you later. Good luck. And we'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the fights guys.